Welcome to the counter offer number 31, season two. No, 32. 32. I bring in two stories that he doesn't know. He brings in two stories that I don't know. And we discuss them. I will start it off, Mr. Bottomley. Start it off, Charles. So there has been massive amounts of building on the west side of Manhattan going into the Hudson River. And it starts pretty much in Tribeca Financial District. And they've just been going up and turning it inside out. Well, Pier 94, which is up here in the Hudson River mm -hmm. uh, on 54th Street. Vornado Realty Trust, Hudson Pacific, Blackstone, New York City's Economic Development Corporation are now turning that into a production for filming. Ah. And to be honest, the place is a dump right now. So it is welcomed. I run past the area and it looks like a really bad abandoned shed area. Uh, so they are putting in a huge amount of num uh, money. I think it was $360 million. They're starting this fall. It's gonna be done in, I think, 2025. That comes on top of Robert De Niro, who put in Will Wildflower Studios in Astoria for $600 million. Wow. So are we seeing Hollywood come to the East Coast? Yeah. I thought when they came to the East Coast that they would want to film on New York City streets, you know? Well, I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to build it in there because it's so expensive to pull permits and traffic and then you have people that are taking photos. And they tours. do it on my street sometimes. It's actually kind of nice. Yeah, it's actually fact, kind of crazy how many people are fun story, involved. somebody in my building, this is long before I was there, Law and Order uh, paid them over a month's rent to be able to film uh, in their apartment. And it's probably a top dollar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Top dollar. They'll yeah. waste that money. No, not at all. Well, it's nice to see because they have, it's literally right right before where the ships and cruises come in. And they all just, they have their little luggage and suitcases crossing over the West Side Highway coming into Manhattan. Yeah. It's really funny, actually. It's like a, oh boy. But they'll at least see a better looking building. So that's my story. It's good to see a lot of development going on in New York City. Good. I know you already saw this article, so I was going to start with the other one, but then I didn't change it around because uh, you already saw it because you mentioned it this morning. Uh, because New, New York's York City. famous Gramercy Park Hotel uh. is to reopen after renovations under the new operator. New operator is a big hotelier. Uh, <laughs> That's good that your phone is. I think they're now bringing in guests. That was the notification. Yeah, that's exactly right. No, in two years, that's when you will be able to uh, start staying there, most likely. That's going to be expensive. Do you remember, it was last year, I think, if not the year before. So Gramercy Park Hotel shut down during COVID. It is a very storied and famous place. Storied. And uh, historic as historic. well. So I was saying storied because people like Babe Ruth stayed there for Ooh. extended stays. Uh, Cook. The, the rooms are big. They are 600 square feet wow. or so. And uh, it's going to be really interesting how they s preserve the old and the new and, you know, really. Uh... Who's going to be the new operator? Oh, and guess who foreclosed on it? What, the bank? Uh, or the... Solio. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so they're the ones that bought it or they're the, they they're were the, the ones that foreclosed on it? It's a uh, land lease. Wow. Yeah. And who owns it? I believe it's the landlords. So ill. Oh, they <laughs> own the land. Yeah. Wow. So that was, you know, no surprise there since they own so much real estate in Manhattan. That is going to be... Whew, it's going to be quality. amazing when that is reopened. There's yeah. a famous restaurant there on the bottom that yep. is world-renowned for its bad service, but also <laughs> very, very good food. And uh, where was I going with it? I had one last final point on it. It's beautiful on the outside. It's a very, very, I like it. I wonder if you'll get a key to the park. Probably not. <laughs> they, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen anyone in that park, to be honest. There's all these keys, but I don't, have you seen anyone in the park? Yes. Well, you're in that area, you know. Of course I have. You're on the east Plus side. I proposed in that park. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, okay. Moving on to story number three, Zillow is full-blown housing market bold predicting the U.S. home prices will jump. So back in February, Zillow said over the next 12 months that it would only go at 
0.5% over the next 12 months, and they said that they bottomed out in February. Zillow, they have all of the housing data. They own everything in the United States, including Street Easy, which is New York City. And to be honest, when you search a home, we were just at a uh, realtor conference, getting better, and they mentioned that when you search for a home, realtor.com doesn't even come up first. Zillow comes up above them on search results and people would rather go to Zillow. So they have all the housing information. They have revised recently, this week, the home prices will rise not 0.5, but 6.5 between July 2023 and July 2024. And this is one of the biggest reasons. This is an incredible statistic. Are you ready? Low inventory. Exactly. <laughs> Just over half as many homes were listed for sale this January as opposed to 2019 July. Or I'm sorry, July, this July and July of 2019. Ha half of many as many homes. That's crazy. And new listings, there is 30% fewer listings coming on the market. So the demand is still out there. We've been talking about it in the city is that there has been a, not a rush, but at least an opening of buyers that say, listen, it's ridiculous paying this amount of money. We predict that we want to be on the wave going to 2025, um, regardless of the interest rates. You know, there's, there's definitely ways to have a three to one buy down. I will be doing that social media post, but also there's a lot of cash. There's a lot of 50% financing and money's abundant right now. Yeah. Well, following 2021, which was, you know, one of the hardest markets ever where buyers were competing against 20 offers. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was like now 60 is that people at an open house. It's like it's dramatically cooled. So, you know, and those people actually have equity in their home. If you bought in 2021, it continued to go up right. until, you know. So, yeah, that is very interesting, Charles. Thank you very much. Uh, the low inventory environment is really catering to the people who have to move. Yeah. So apartments are still moving, and it's mostly because people actually need to make life decisions that cause them to move. Yep. Uh, small condo developers powering New York City's production. Condominiums of 10 units or fewer comprise of nearly half the city's new housing. Wow. Yeah. That makes sense, though. Because you take a smaller footprint and you build on it, or you take a townhouse and build on top of it. It's just cheaper too. Yeah. You know, like the construction, the labor, the cost, the materials. Permitting, all that stuff. It's yep. easier to build, it's faster to build. Uh, people, in, uh, you get lower common charges on these buildings. So there's a lot of perks and there's demand for these smaller condo buildings. Yep. And those smaller developers are the ones leading the way on that. Well, if you think about that was it. That's a very good article. Yeah, if you think about it, new development someone just inquired about a place in West Chelsea called the Lantern House and they're at, you know, 22 to 2400 a square foot and going higher, but then you also look around that whole area, it's incredible the pricing they're getting, but this is those developments are at like 1800 a square foot or 1900. So they're not like crazy amenities, doorman, everything's beautiful. It's like, listen, you're not going to get all the bells and whistles, but people would rather get it for 1800 a square foot. Well, especially when you're considering the renter or rent versus buy, yeah. you know, you get a lot less without those amenities, you don't have to have high common charges. So that really helps on the monthly expenses. That's why Brooklyn was so hot during 2021, because those yep. taxes, not only the taxes, but also the common charges were so much less. So. You should go out to Brooklyn and just stand in downtown Brooklyn and just see the amount of development that is going on. It is incredible. Wow. It's just like down Flatbush Avenue is completely transformed. It's like I was you walking can see through that there. One building, nine DeKalb from. It's gigantic. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is unbelievable the development that has gone on there. Well, that is the news for this week. Well, I'm surprised you didn't bring up an article, Charles. I will be posting that on social media I'm that New York you didn't City. Bring up an article about Zillow only doing 1% down payments. Oh. Well. Did you see it? Mr. Sirhan did a nice post about it. One oh. percent. A little bonus. Let's well, talk about I guess it. We'll have to go to the news for him for the news, huh? Yeah, exactly. One percent <laughs> down payments. 
Obviously, it's very interesting that they're going to be financing. They have an abundance, potentially, of cash. Uh, there's also, we've been hearing roughly seller financing on a couple of condos. Uh, we dealt with one downtown, but right. I've heard it more and more. If you're not going to pay 7%, 7.5%, the oh, seller. Especially these new developments. And They're why right. not get 5% on you selling the property and then you're getting 5% or 6%? That sounds like a deal. You it know, does sound like seller deal. financing, and it's consistent. So I think there's, uh, do you have anything at the 1%? Another way to help those uh, monthly expenses, what exactly. you're talking about. The 1%, so, I'm not sure. To be determined. All right. Maybe we'll, next week. We'll be back next week. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. If you want us to talk about an article, send it over, charles at boatenston.com. And in the meantime, you can like, share, and subscribe. And we come every Wednesday with some news and some banter. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next Wednesday. Have a great day.